PJD Guitars are a British brand founded in 2010, with huge aspirations to be one of the next great guitar makers and a stunning range of guitars to show for it. PJD are a company that you definitely should be keeping an eye on in the immediate future. We at Guitar Guitar are extremely pleased to say that we now stock PJD guitars, and to mark such an exciting occasion, we had the privilege of sitting down and getting to know the brand with Lee, the founder of PJD. So, from the man himself, how did it all start? So, the company's been going since 2010, and it was just me that started the company back in East London, uh, basically in a shed, building guitars, teaching myself. Fast forward nearly 12 years later, and here we are with the models that you guys have got in stock now mm -hmm. and got a team of 12 people building the guitars we're based just outside of york yeah these this is what we're doing this is what we build i'd always played guitar since i was i don't know 10 years old you know at school and stuff i'd always been obsessed with electric guitars and it kind of evolved from kind of buying guitars, collecting guitars, and spending all my money on guitars, and then kind of tweaking them, changing pickups. And then I just thought, how hard could it be to put my own guitar together? So mm -hmm. I bought some parts and stuff, and that's how I kind of really got into it. But actually seriously building stuff sort of came, yeah, a little bit later, and when I started to you know, really look into how to build a guitar from scratch. Obviously started by, you know, designing my own shape, which was pretty horrendous, actually. <laughs> I think I burnt that guitar. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't want any <laughs> evidence of it. Um, but yeah, it kind of started there, you know, and, you know, I designed my own body and stuff, and you know, there's a lot to learn, obviously. Sure. In, there's a lot that goes into building guitars. And I don't think you ever stop learning. And still, to this day, Still trying to improve the designs, you know, work out different ways of doing things, and yeah. But these are these are the creations that we we're now we're now at. As we already mentioned, PJD is a homegrown UK brand, with almost every single element of their guitars built in-house by a moderately small team of 12 or so, Lee has been very particular in choosing the parts of the guitar that PJD do not make themselves. The, the only things we don't build in-house are the hardware and the pickups, right. and that's kind of it to be honest. Um, the pickups are bare knuckle or cream tea. Mm -hmm and the hardware is Gotar, so we get that from us uh, Japanese sure. and it's just really good, really good hardware. It's reliable and yeah, I've never had any problems with it and as for the pickups, I mean I'm sure most people have heard of Bare Knuckle by now. Yeah. You know, a British company, um, yeah, they do some fantastic stuff. Cream tea pickups, the guy Thomas, who started the company, is from Norway. Yeah. And now lives over in the UK. They hand wind all their pickups, same as Bare Knuckle. Um, and yeah, they make fantastic pickups as well. Alongside some of the highest quality pickups and hardware you can ask for, PJD do not spare any effort on the construction of these guitars, adopting some of the most effective methods of making guitars that are incredibly reliable and comfortable, with the tones to match. We'll talk a little bit about sort of techniques, building techniques, because there's quite a lot of interesting things that you've done with these. They're obviously, they're all bolt-on. Bolt-on necks. All bolt-on, yeah. The neck, I believe, is, is quarter-sawn. Yeah. I'm not exactly an engineer, so could you just explain what that, what that kind of means? So quarter-sawn is to do with the, the grain and how, the, how the, basically the, 
the neck is cut from a tree, for instance, mm -hmm. insert diagram here. Basically, if you look at the end of the neck, the grain runs straight, so it's very yeah, stable. Um, and being roasted as well, uh, that adds a lot of stability to the, to the neck. And it's, it slightly changes the tone of the neck, makes it slightly warmer than maybe a, a, a standard maple. But certainly, you know, as you can see, all of the necks are, are roasted. Yeah, even, um, yeah, yeah, even the ones with sort of like rosewood fingerboards and stuff, they still have the... It's just a very neck. stable wood and certainly being quarter sawn, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to get any necks twisting or anything like that. And it looks fantastic as well. Well, I was going to say for me, I know yeah. that roasted maple has so many sort of perks and benefits, but for me, it just looks good. Like, I don't, it just it just looks really good. I think you can sort of you can just feel it. I mean, like it's got this nice like smoothness to it on the neck as well, which I'm yeah. sure you know. There's how do you finish that? Like, what's what's the kind of process there in terms of? So the necks, the necks are like a um, it's a super thin nitrocellulose, mm -hmm. and it's satin as well, which most players prefer. I certainly do. Definitely, yeah. You know, it's yeah. a lot. You know, a glossy neck I find is quite sticky. Certainly, when your hand gets sweaty maybe yeah but yeah it's a super thin nitro finish so really you know it's there to protect the wood and obviously it brings out the color and just looks absolutely yeah. amazing and as well it's going to age really nicely and naturally we're not about building guitars that you hang on the wall and don't play and put in a glass case it's all about having an instrument that you know yeah gets gigged gets and, and well loved by holding these, they, they they feel like very, very functional guitars. You do get it sometimes, you know, when you, there's, there's certain guitars that almost, when you hold them, you're like, I, I almost don't want to like use this because I don't want to yeah. break it in half. It feels a bit frat, but these, these feel like sturdy. I don't know how to explain it. I mean, like specifically this model, there's something about it. It's not, it's not quite like a full size body to what I'm used to. And it's got quite like a nice thinness to it, but it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel, as I say, fragile or anything like yeah, that. Sure. It, just, it just feels really, really good and like well weighted and, you know, just very comfortable. Currently, PJD's two headline models are the Carey and the St. John, both of which are available in many different variations, which Lee very kindly explains to us. So all of the St. John's, be it a, um, is there an, we've got an elite over so there. We've got this one here. Um, as you can, there probably see the pickup configuration is exactly the same <laughs> between the two. And both bodies are chambered. Okay. Uh, they are available with an F-hole yeah. or without an F-hole. But yeah, that, that's kind of, you know, it keeps the, the, the weight down. Certainly on, on the standard, mm -hmm. we're looking at American ash right. on the body and the Elite is swamp ash. Mm -hmm. So you'll feel that that is quite a bit lighter than that, but this is still very light. You know, yep. we're still looking around the seven pound mm -hmm. sort of region, I would say. Is that something that you're kind of, when you're making these guitars, are you, are you really concentrating on, on the weight? Is that something that you're Definitely. keeping? Definitely. Yeah, I think that's always been a big thing for me, especially if you're playing, you know, a, a two hour gig or something, you know, you don't want something that's 12 or 13 pounds. No. Um, but then again, we do the, um, the limited, so like the Elite, but it's got a mahogany back. You've not actually got one here, but so there is that for people that do prefer a heavier guitar, really. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the tonal characteristics are different. And, and across the range, so not just within this model, but across all of the range, do you find that you do use quite a lot of different body words depending on, on the model and, and what you're doing with it? And, and is there kind of like any set thing to that or is it more just whatever so the person wants? Certainly for now, the, the standards are, are set. American ash mm -hmm. body, maple neck, rosewood or maple fretboard. Sure. So that's yeah. personal preference. We can preference. see there's a few different variations of that. We have got, as yeah. I said, the maple neck and the rosewood neck as well. The Elite which is on the end there, and there's another one here. This one here, yeah? Yeah, that's, um, they're always swamp ash, or at least they are for the time being, certainly this year. Mm -hmm. um, and then the limiteds are kind of where we get to have a little bit of fun. You've not actually got a limited here, but mm -hmm. um, 
we kind of find some really cool wood and we make a limited range. Sure. You know, it's sure. kind of exactly what it is. And it'll be the same specifications as um, the Elites, but it'll have a different backwood and we might have a high, highly figured top. Sure. You know, different grades. Yeah. We get to use some really cool, interesting stuff yeah. that comes through the workshop. So, yeah. I mean, so because I know we've also got. Well, it's probably let's kind of move on as well now to the carry as well. This one in particular that I've got in my hand is like super. So that's a custom. Figured, so that's a custom. Yeah, one. that's a carry custom. So that's kind of um, you can kind of spec the custom however you want. So obviously, I'm pretty sure you can see that that top is yeah. a. I mean, it's it's like a five five A, yeah, master grade. And and all, you've also got all of this kind of like figuring and stuff on the on the actual neck as well. And it's obviously you know the the the, the wood that's been used specifically on this is a lot more sort of as you're saying high grade. And yeah, so it's a um, that particular one, obviously the quilted maple top. Mm -hmm the 5A roasted neck um, and the bodywood is some very old uh, Brazilian mahogany which is really hard to get hold yeah, of so we've got a nice stock easy. of that. The electric guitar as a concept is not one that is easy to reinvent for any brand, let alone one that has existed for just over a decade. It can be extremely difficult for any manufacturer to walk the line of building a guitar that feels familiar while standing out from the crowd. This is something we feel PJD has done an incredible job of. Lee's vision for PJD has never been to throw away the rulebook of guitar building. Instead, PJD takes influence from some of their favorite brands and puts their own spin on those tried and tested building concepts to create a combination of ideals which feel both fresh and nostalgic. I mean, obviously a lot of the woods that we use are kind of traditional mm -hmm. in guitar building. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just from kind of past experience in what guitars I've had and the, the kind of tones that I like to hear. Yeah. Certainly with the 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 Swamp Ash, you know, a lot of fenders. Can we can we say that? Can you we can sell the brand names. Yeah. Yeah. If not, we'll just beep it out. Beep, beep. You know, you've got some very familiar tones. I think with mm -hmm. with those kinds of woods, um, it's just what works. You know, it's I, I think if it's not broken, don't try and fix it. And I think. It's nice to use interesting exotic woods sometimes, but they don't always work, I don't think, <laughs> in terms of tone. They yeah, look cool, but yeah. you know, a maple top on a mahogany back is very traditional. And yeah, I very much like tradition, I'd yeah. say. What? Simplistic. You wouldn't be wrong to call PJD Guitars a boutique guitar brand. Any brand would be classed as such when as much effort is put into the quality of every individual instrument like this. Yet, when you look around at most boutique brands, at least the ones that are building their own original designs, you'll probably notice one common theme, the neck join. Most boutique builders go down the path of using set or through necks, but PJD uses a bolt-on neck design. Some people would argue that a bolt-on neck simply does not provide the same tone transfer as other methods, but Lee has something to say about that. So I think there's a big misconception that people think that maybe a set neck is better in terms of tonal transfer, okay. so you get a better tone through a set neck, mm -hmm. but if you've got a good bolt-on neck, it's actually just as good, yeah. if not maybe better, but it's not a traditional bolt on neck. 
Oh, really? Okay. So, um, it's basically not just four wood screws that mm -hmm. are held, holding a plate on the back. These are actual machine bolts that are screwed into inserts in the back of the neck. Mm -hmm. So, they won't ever wear out. And if they do, they're very easy to replace. Right. Um, so yeah, so how's, just, that, how's that different from, from like a standard bolt on neck? What's, what's so a standard bolt on neck is just a wood screw, basically. Okay. So a plate on the back, as you'll see on, you know, most, most guitars that mm -hmm. have bolt on necks, it'll just be a plate, four wood screws. And of course, over time, that wood screw is gonna either wear out or it's just not gonna fit into the hole anymore. And I didn't see any point in building, you know, a high-end guitar and having such a sort of primitive okay. way of bolting the neck on. So, yeah. if you were to take the neck off, you'll see brass inserts in the back of the mm -hmm. neck, which the machine bolts are screwed into. Yeah. Okay. So it's a real yeah. good connection and gives you a nice, nice tight fit. Yeah. Because, I mean, you can, you can see when you look at it, and we'll, we'll show some close-ups of this, that it's very clean. There's, there's, you know, you can't really see any gaps. You don't you want really... to be able to put a credit card in there, do you? No. Right. Is that is that your test? <laughs> do you have like <laughs> just just put, put a Post credit card? Post-it note. In. Yeah. Post-it yeah. note. Is that thin? Yeah. Right. Is that, is I mean, that no, like no. legitimately? <laughs> no. I'm sure it was at one point. But, but you can see, like you can see when you look at it, that it's, just, it's very close. And I, I assume that the cleaner that, the cleaner that, that cut is, and, yeah. the, and the more perfectly those two shapes fit together, the better the transfer is gonna be. Absolutely, When yeah. you've got the bolts, the way that you bolt it on, mixed in with that, just all of these little details yeah. kind of make it work the way it, where it does. PJD guitars spare absolutely no effort in the construction of their instruments. All that aside, it's not just about the build quality. These guitars are stunning. Every finish has its own unique look, depending on what model you go for, which Lee explained better than we ever could. Yeah, so the standards have, have all got the, the same body finish, so mm -hmm. it's an open grain. Uh, it's nitrocellulose, but it's like super thin, mm -hmm. and it's a satin satin finish whereas the elites and customs is a satin top but you can also as you can see on the custom it's a gloss There's top a gloss you can get a gloss one um, well. these are just satin we're adding a lot of new colors and i think i like to do that all the time but if i get told off it's just not good so we've gone for some like super kind of classic colors mm -hmm. i think yeah you know we all know maybe where the inspiration came from. Um, but one thing that I really like, little touch, is this. Yeah. So you got, you got, your, little, you got your little plates here, which are painted the color of the, of the finish, but then those ones, you've got the, you've got the actual top finish. Same back, color. Which is, yeah. I don't think I've seen that before, really. It's not something it's that's very little, common. It's another little touch. I can't see what I'm doing here. It's just a, it's just a kind of another little individual touch that I mm -hmm. think just looks really good. Yeah, um, it does. It does look really good. And then you've got this here, which seems to be, I think on all the models, you've got like the small like pickup the, ring that's like a- It's a three ply. Guard. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same material as the, as yeah. the pick guard. They're all made in house as well. Um, but certainly on the, on the standards, uh, you know, you can kind of spec a lot of different options in terms of the pick guard. So some people have gone for maybe a mismatch set, mm -hmm. which looks quite cool, like a tortoise shell 
pickup ring and a cream pick guard or something. Oh yeah, I can imagine that would Just, look really good. Um, yeah. But yeah, we do we do quite a few colours. And and you've got all of this grain as well from the from from the body. Is that is that something that always? Yes, yeah, it's you always it's, get it's all open grain um, with the standards. And with the elites, the backs are open grain, but the fronts are sure. Well, it's maple, so it's it's a it's a closed grain anyway. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. In this video, we've explored some of the things that make these guitars so special, but we couldn't sign this one off without first talking about one last thing in a little more detail. The neck. PJD's necks are spectacular to hold and feel. With an incredibly comfortable fingerboard radius and neck profile, we had Lee dig deep on why these necks feel so good. The radius, fingerboard radius. Of course. Yeah, that's quite interesting because everyone, so we had a moment when you first got here and we had all the guitars laid out in case, cases yeah. and almost every member of staff came up and felt the neck and they're like, oh, that's interesting. Kind of gets, you know, a little bit, I guess yeah. it is a compound radius, isn't it? The, the yeah, so on the, yeah, the fingerboard is a compound radius, so it's a 10 inch to 12 inch, so it's a slight, Mm -hmm. Slight compact. So it's, a, it's a lot. Well, it's not a lot. It's slightly flatter up past the 12th fret. So does that only affect the fingerboard side, or does that affect this side That's as well? That's just the fingerboard. So, so, so it actually doesn't get any wider. No. So the, the back. Of, well, like the, the the back of the neck obviously gets wider as you go up because mm -hmm. you know, as you can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the the neck profile is loosely based on a kind of standard C shape. So it's pretty familiar when someone picks it mm. up, they're like, you know, yeah. oh, that's weird. It's, it's, it's not too chunky, but it's not too thin. It's, yeah. that, it's that very nice middle natural. Yeah, um, definitely. That's kind of what we wanted to go for. It's the same with the, with the setup, you know, something that, you know, feels very familiar and, and can be very comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as for, the, as for the, the fingerboard radius, you know, I didn't want anything too crazy in terms of um, the compound radius. But you certainly notice the, the, uh, the 12 inch radius yeah. as you get higher up, certainly for it like bends and stuff. almost tapers out a little bit. Yeah. 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 I personally don't like super wide fingerboard radius, like 12 inch fingerboard radius. Obviously that's my preference because I find that when you're playing chords, it's, it's a lot of strain on your fingers. Yeah. But, it, in the context of this, because that only really starts to happen around here. Exactly. It makes a lot of sense because when you get up here, then it's like, oh no, this 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 is beneficial to me. Where this you're to gonna be, be needing this it. This to have that wider thing, but yeah. then I don't I don't feel like I'm having to like really stretch my hands out to just yeah, sure. play like basic chords or like bar chords, which is pretty perfect to be honest with you. It's, it's and it is as you say, it's subtle. It's not it's not like a. It's not like a, you kind of just feel it get bigger. It's just it just makes everything feel a little bit nicer up here. And and you were saying in terms of like bends, if you're up here and you're you're bending, you, you're you're in less danger of it kind of choking out. Choking out. Flatter fretboard, yeah. less likely to choke out. Mm -hmm. um, twenty-two frets as well. Twenty-two frets, yep. Yeah. And is that the uh, same across the board? Yeah, frets? same across the board. Uh, nickel silver frets, Jessica. I was going to ask about the frets. Yeah, because they're quite. Spherically ended. Yes, they're very different to most frets that I've that mm -hmm. I've kind of played on, and it's very nice. They yeah. feel quite. Are they quite tall? Are they quite like tall frets, or are they? I would say medium. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's kind of our thing. Uh, the the yes. well, they they're called hot dog ends. Hot dog ends. Yeah, yeah, hot dog end frets. Is that is that named by you guys or is that just more? I like don't a... know. I've no, it's not by us. I've definitely heard it from someone before. Um, yeah, I, but I, you can see it's, why they are called that. Yeah. Um, no, but I I really like it. Like it's like what what I think is good about it is that you're you're in you're not in really any danger of having like sharp ends. 
with exactly. the frets. Exactly, and as you can see, so the, smooth. The, the, the way we do the fret slots, they're routed. Okay. So there's no fret tang at the end, so you're not gonna get sprouting. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in cold weather and stuff, guitars, frets are prone to, mm. you know, the wood shrinks and you get this sharp. So when you say they're routed, like you use like the machine to kind of like machine yeah. out the... the exactly, yeah. So what's the alternative? How do you... How Just straight it? through. So right. you, it'd be cut straight through. Either, you can and still do can it on a... that cause kind of like... Once the frets are in and, and, you know, the weather changes or the humidity changes, then it can be prone to, to sprouting and we just kind of wanted to avoid that entirely. Which yeah, is I mean, why. it makes, makes total sense. I guess we, when you combine that with the fact that you've got roasted maple neck and it's quarter sawn. It's pretty kind of stable. Thing, you're, not, you're not really going to get any movement out of that at all. No. I mean, obviously, normal sort of truss rod access and everything. <laughs> As you can tell by the tone of this video, we've been blown away by PJD Guitars as a brand and we've only just scratched the surface on all of the things that makes them one of the most exciting prospects in the electric guitar world right now. We cannot wait to see what you think of these guitars. We at Guitar Guitar are so grateful to Lee and the rest of the team at PJD for taking the time out to talk us through the brand and we cannot wait to see every one of you that is watching this video's thoughts on the guitars. If you enjoyed this video and would still like to know even more about PJD and what Lee had to say when we spoke to him, you can watch a full uncut version of the interview you saw in this video in the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any thoughts for us regarding PJD guitars or this video, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us in the comments below. If you liked this video, a like and subscribe will always help us along the way. For any product information, come visit us in store or have a chat with us online at www.guitarguitar.co.uk. With an incredibly experienced sales team of like-minded musicians, we'd love to help you out with whatever question you may have. Until next time, see you soon. Um, I, mean, I used to have a pager. No one ever paged me. What year did you have a pager? I don't know. I wasn't allowed a mobile phone. Oh, right. <laughs> so actually you were a kid with a pager? Yeah. That is the saddest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I know. And no one ever paged me. Surely the point of a child having... <laughs> is to cut... is when they're in trouble... <laughs> is when they're in trouble that they can get help. The page, pager.